It feels like it's been a lifetime since a Mario sports game truly had energy behind it, but Aces has so much energy that it can use it to control time. For the first time since Mario Strikers Charged, I actually want to keep playing a Mario sports game. The mix of pure tennis and fighting game elements make this so competitive. There are so many options and scenarios and Camelot have managed to balance it all excellently. Basically, every time you return the ball with a charge shot or pull off a world time trick shot, the gauge in the corner of the screen will fill up. You can use this to slow down time, or when it turns green, stars will appear on the stage, and these allow you to pause time and freely aim with the cost of some of your meter. And if you feel your gauge all the way, you'll be able to pull off a special shot. If your opponent doesn't perfectly time their return, it'll smash their racket. There are so many elements at play, yet they all work so seamlessly together. For instance, I may have enough energy to start using zone shots, but the same may be true for my opponent. I could be offensive and use them to try and damage their racket, or I could save up my gauge and be defensive and return whatever they fire at me. Triggering zone speed at just the right moment is so crucial. If you do it as soon as they hit the ball, you're going to be wasting a lot of your gauge, and if you do it too late, you'll risk not being able to catch up with the ball at all. One of my favourite things to do when both players have their gauge maxed out is to completely hit the ball out of bounds with the super in the hope that they return with their super, thus keeping the court completely open for a smooth return. You can even finish a game early by breaking all your opponent's rackets and thus forcing a KO victory. The possibilities really feel endless and new mechanics add so many layers to the pure tennis gameplay without ever coming across as tacked on gimmicks. You can play without them, but I never really wanted to. These core mechanics are what make Aces so fun. They're a far cry from the coloured chance shots of Open and Ultra Smash, which I felt diminished so much strategy in those games. Camelot finally found a way to make Mario Tennis accessible for newcomers while being something fans can master, though unfortunately there are a number of areas where the ball gets hit out of play. The core tennis is better than it's ever been, but almost everything surrounding it has questionable flaws. Let's start with how the game opens. Wait, where's the CG opening? It seems Camelot just can't top their stellar first impression from Mario Power Tennis. Instead of being greeted by an opening cutscene or a menu, you'll be whooshed straight into the game's adventure mode. If you want to jump straight into multiplayer, you'll need to sit through some cutscenes or skip them first. Now there is a little bit of story, but there's like four cutscenes and most of them are really short. Adventure mode isn't quite the return to the roots of Mario Tennis Power Tour, in fact it's extremely far from it. Basically you wander around a world map in a similar way to Super Mario World or New Super Mario Bros. U, and instead of levels you jump into tennis challenges. This could be a simple one-on-one -on -one with the AI, it could be a round that forces you to rely on zone shots by independently aiming at 30 piranha plants, or you may need to maintain a rally of 20 consecutive returns. Unfortunately, it's all over far too quickly and ideas are frequently reused only with often jarring difficulty spikes. There's a story to tie it all together, but outside of the opening, which is essentially, Wario and Waluigi have found an ancient, mystical tennis racket which is a lawsuit away from the Infinity Gauntlet. That's really it. The rest of the game just basically boils down to a few sentences finding excuses for why you're playing tennis. This is not a deep story, and nothing really happens. You're just trying to find some stones before Wario does. With the exception of one lone level, you only play as Mario over the course of Adventure Mode. It makes sense for cutscene animations, but to say it lacks variety would be an understatement. Now Mario does level up like an RPG and you can obtain new rackets over the course of your journey, but I never really felt any impact from any of this. The adventure mode barely lasted 3 hours, which made me question the point of any of these RPG mechanics. They don't carry over to other modes, there's nothing more to do once you finish adventure mode, and they don't really feel like they do anything. Sure, the better rackets have more hit points, but they never feel necessary. Boss battles though are thankfully the highlight of the single player. All of them are wonderfully imaginative with clever spins on mainline Mario games. Whether you're using trick shots to jump over a giant blooper, or using zone shots to pound on P.T. Piranha's belly button. It's also nice to see Irock from Mario 64 again, though he's a little more icy this time around. Adventure mode has its moments of providing the thrills you'd expect, but it's bogged down by repetitive missions with little payoff. The only real reason to keep on pushing through is to unlock more multiplayer courts. The courts themselves are really wonderful and diverse. Having three variants of Marina Stadium isn't quite ideal, but whether it's Piranha Plant Forest or Snowfall Mountain, they're all full of visual spectre, and the optional stage hazards add a ton of chaos to matches. Inferno Island, for instance, is full of exploding Mecha Koopas who force you to move around the stage more and risk your positioning. Mirage Mansion has mystical panels that keep you on your toes, as you're never quite sure just what direction the ball will go. They're all really spectacular, and I love that their gimmicks aren't forced on those who don't want them. We were hoping Aces would finally provide a solid single player offering to the world of Mario Sports, and frankly it does not deliver on that. Aces is just as much of a multiplayer game as Mario Kart 8, and if you aren't playing with others, it's a pretty average swing. Even other single player modes are severely lacking. 
Single-player tournaments only take place in variations of Marina Stadium, which you may know better as the single stadium from Ultra Smash. It's just so boring to go through consecutive matches on the same court with nothing to spice them up. Then there's the free play options, which are frankly just baffling. You can't set up rounds longer than best of three, despite the adventure mode and tournament mode featuring just that. You can't just select the court that you want, and instead have to toggle off what courts you don't want. You don't even get images of the courts, so if you aren't familiar with their names, then good luck. It also does not help that the AI are gods. They'll somehow block specials perfectly without ever entering zone speed and miraculously make every single trick shot. Apart from in doubles matches, where they'll constantly lose you points. Thankfully, some of the options fare a little better. You can toggle stage hazards off on each stage. You can turn off all zone mechanics and just play a pure round of tennis. And if you want a Wii Sports style experience, you can try out the separate swing mode and play with motion controls. Swing mode actually has some really cool side options like playing with a giant ball, or playing with a ball that gradually gets smaller with each hit. It's kinda crazy that we can't play with these in anything but swing mode. The character variety is also far greater than it's ever been. Mario, Luigi, Wario, and Waluigi have all been redesigned to actually appear in tennis gear, and the roster's larger than any previous Mario Tennis game. Chain Chomp is a very good boy. There's even more characters coming down the line, like Koopa Trooper, Birdo, Blooper, and Diddy Kong. Mario Tennis Aces has such a solid base, but it's simply bizarre that everything surrounding it feels stuck together with cheap glue. It's an absolute blast when you're playing locally with friends. And I would provide some online impressions, but that component was hardly available in the review period. We did some friendly matches with fellow reviewers, and I found the same inconsistent connections as the multiplayer demo. Thankfully, there's a day one patch on the way, which apparently addresses the netcode issues, but we simply cannot verify if that's true right now. For that reason, we will not be scoring Mario Tennis Aces today. Mechanically, it's a brilliant game, but if the single player is average and the online barely works, then we can hardly recommend it. So there's a lot resting on this patch. Keep an eye out for the follow-up video coming in just a few days. But at least you can play with friends, which you couldn't actually do in Ultra Smash. I like the foundation of Mario Tennis Aces a ton, and found myself addicted over the course of the multiplayer demo. But I've not quite had that experience in my time with the full game, despite having more characters and more courts. It's a multiplayer focused game through and through, and without proper access to the online component, it's kind of an average game if you're playing on your own. Local matches have resulted in some of the best laughs I've had with the system, but we really need to see if the online gets better before giving it a score. And with that, thank you so much for watching. We hope to give our final thoughts as soon as we can, but until then, keep it locked on Game Explain for more on Mario Tennis Aces and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye!